Hi guys, so Boris Johnson's sister Rachel spoke to a lady called Laura Perrins, who's a writer for, wait for it, The Conservative Woman. And she's also a blogger for Catholic Herald, a religious magazine. Now she gave her opinion on whether people who don't have kids should pay more taxes. In this typical way of arguing on the subject, she basically sells the Tory idea that people's primary function in life is to pay taxes. To pay taxes to prop up a system that most of the time doesn't care about them. Now I'll park the irony that she's talking about a falling population to Rachel Johnson, the sister of Boris Johnson. But let's hear why people who don't have children are the problem here. Um, let's talk to Laura Perrins. She's a writer for The Conservative Woman. Um, she joins us live tonight. Hi, Laura. Hi, Rachel. I know that you're also the mother of a famille nombreuse, but does that inform your thinking on this idea that you should tax the childless in order to pay me and you to be able to afford better childcare or childcare? Um, I mean, of course, it does influence you, you know, to, to some degree. It, you, you, you can't say whether it, if you didn't have children, if you thought a different way. But I think the first question is, or, or the first thing you have to remember is that everybody benefits from the next generation, you know, whether you personally have children or you don't. And, um, you know, if, if people don't have children and someone that cha is childless out there might think, well, you know, I've, I've saved enough to cover myself and my care and my pensions and everything. What they don't understand is it, it it's more than just having the money. You actually need the workers to carry out, you know, the job that you think you might need doing in, in, in 40 years time. Well, then we can rely on immigration. Oh, wait a minute. She's a conservative, so she's probably against immigration. And so I just have to add as well something. Why are these people always Irish? <laughs> it's embarrassing. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, these religious people. Okay, anyway, she's religious and she's a conservative and she's Irish and this really is grinding my gears. Anyway, but um, you can rely on immigrants to do these jobs. A, lo a lot of the the jobs that, you know, the, the, the older people don't want to do, they'll find somebody else to do it. Um, is this about, is this an anti-immigration idea that you need to, well, stop you know, bringing people in and breed your own. Is that what she's trying to get at here? And also this idea that we just reduce people down to, well, numbers. They, they produce something. They're, people are no longer people, they're just commodities. We need, we, need more, we need more young people, we need more people born because we need to prop up this collapsing capitalist system we need to throw more bodies at at the at this system at the machine it's quite dark you think about it these people are saying yes we need to have more children we need to throw more more and more people into this machine in order to keep the machine going instead of actually looking at the machine and saying maybe there's a problem with the machine not the people who decide not to throw people into the machine or who who can't throw people into the machine. I'm not look. I'm not criticizing anyone who is having children here. This person is suggesting that people who either can't have children or decide not to have children are the problem, and they should be having children because the machine needs more needs more bodies. I'm saying. Um, so that's the first point. The second point, and I think I said it to you before when I spoke on this, is most people think of it in, in terms of future taxpayers. But the big issue is you lose all the new ideas, you lose all the new innovation, any new art or culture, anything like that. All of the energy obviously comes from um, the next generation. And if you Well, once again, if you're welcoming people into your country from abroad, they bring their ideas with them. A lot of people may not be able to express themselves in their home country and they're able to express themselves in the UK or in Ireland if this is this woman's case. Um, people may not be able to start businesses abroad, but when they arrive in the UK or in Europe, they may be able to do that. There are greater opportunities for them. Why is it always we need more people because the machine is hungry? 
Um, and also this idea that, well, we need more people also for art or for history or for culture or... Um, I'm sorry to say, but most people are not involved in that. The number of artists in the world is very little. Most people are not involved in producing art or producing music or producing um, something that she would say is valuable. Most people, I'm sorry to say this, but it's the reality. Let's talk about reality here. Most people do jobs they don't like in order to have enough money to survive. And that's part of the problem here. That's part of the machine, the capitalist system. That we force people to do jobs they don't like, to spend time away from their family, to, to spend time away from their hobbies or things that make them happy, to do jobs they don't like in order to make enough money to survive. Once again, I'm against the system. I'm against the machine. She seems to be pro-machine and pro-throwing more bodies into that machine. If you don't, if you don't produce that, then your your society just sort of slides into it to an end. It, it could well where it Ger it, where it, it, it could be fine, but it will be quite dull. <laughs> so, so, capitalism, uh, the the opposite of capitalism is a bit dull. The opposite of food banks is dull. The opposite of, of poverty is dull. The opposite of environmental destruction is dull. The, the opposite of pri uh, private healthcare and a corrupt political system is dull. Um, and that needs to be borne in mind. Um, and the thing is, I mean, he, 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 it was quite a provocative headline in, in the print edition of the Times saying, you know, let's tax the child, the child free. But I think it should be remembered that Britain is a very unchild friendly place, certainly in terms of its tax and benefit system um, compared to the continent. Wh whatever way you look at it, um, families really are, are punished in the tax system. Well, then change the tax system to help people who have kids. But why is it her solution is, or I think she's suggesting this, is, well, the system is punishing people who have kids. So to fix that, we need to punish people who don't. What? <laughs> That's the solution. We're, puni we're punishing one group through taxes. So, well, why don't we just not punish that, p that group then? No, her, her solution is, no, 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 we need instead to punish another group. And let's get back to the main point here. This is anti-immigration rhetoric. This is anti-immigration talk. And I've heard it before. It's about, look, our population is decreasing. Instead of actually allowing more people in, what we need to, is to, we need to do is encourage or force more of the native, quote unquote, population to have more kids. We've seen it before. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.